What's up everyone, Darkscream217 here, and um, I'd like to thank some of my subs and, you know, the feedback that I got from my previous video. I said some pretty controversial stuff, but I still stick to what I think about most reviewers being all popcorn fluff and stuff. And I also like to thank my subscribers for, you know, giving me some small advice on what to do when making videos and stuff. I now have a drive to make a variety of type videos again. Um, I'd like to thank the Anime Overviewer, Railgun7401, Mitsuhide the Vagrant, Omega Wolf 67 A-Log, LazyManJ, and I'm also going to give people some little nicknames, uh, because I might be using their real names on YouTube and I don't feel like dropping real people's names. So, JG Baker, Sploosh321, Matteo, Nick Izumi, and Shane P. I hope you can recognize who you are and you can <laughs> accept the thanks. And uh, some people said that I should make that Twitter account, so like Magus, I kind of sold out. <laughs> Truth be told, I actually always had a Twitter account, but I set it up under a different name. I was just originally using it to follow Ed Boon in the middle of all the Mortal Kombat hype. But you can find it on the uh, link below. I posted it on the video here. It's Darkscream217. The name I like to use is Amino underscore Darkscreen, which is also my PSN account uh, that I use to play some, uh, some games on the Vita. So if you feel like adding me there, go right ahead, but I don't have that many Vita titles. Um, just um, Dynasty Warriors, Luminous, uh, Persona 4, and, um, and Gravity Rush. Anyways, uh, I'm going to do another request thing. Um, Multifire always said that these were never a good idea, but I still like to do them because I still like to consider my you know, fans' uh, thoughts onto what they want to see on me. But however, this one's a little different. They're both going to be reviewed anyways, but I want to see which fans want to see first. Um... The two reviews I have up here are the ones I mentioned in my previous video. There were cancelled reviews. As for the Getchikin one, I do have plans on doing it, maybe. Um, I have some thoughts about, you know, Getchikin if I ever get around to ranting about Media Blasters, but I just have to come up with a script about it and try to, you know, express my thoughts on Getchikin. But back to this. If you, uh, whatever you want to see first, just post on the comments, and I'll just count that as the vote, and whoever got the highest votes gets reviewed first. You got Project Echo, an old movie from the 80s, and you got Bamboo Blade, a recent, uh, uh well, almost recent Moe Blob show. Um, I had plans to review these before, but I never got around to doing them, but I do have plans to get around to doing them. And, um... I like to hear what you want. Uh, I like to hear your thoughts on what you want to see first and why. So, usual. Post in the comment below. I'll tell you that as a vote. And there you go. Thank you, my subs. twittercom darkscreen 217 which helps me branch out a little more, as well as you know, give quick little opinions on stuff that aren't large enough to be in vlog format. And. Like I said, post whatever you want to see first as a review. And I actually do have some stuff to talk about. They're just little stuff, but uh, I, I, I've been wanting to express my views on this for about a week. Let's talk wrestling. Or wrestling. Let's just talk about wrestling. Um, Lately, for the past month or two, uh, I've developed this weird habit of looking up... um documentaries and stuff about professional wrestling um but I haven't been watching current wrestling um or if I was I'm actually watching a little bit of TNA which to describe that show is one step forward two steps way fucking back um but I'm not here to rant about TNA nor am I going to rant about WWE because I just stopped watching that altogether um multitude of reasons, some of them already expressed by other vloggers to death, um, but, you know, I, I still, you know, I grew up with wrestling as a kid, I, I enjoyed it, um, 
You know, I grew up watching WCW during the NWO reign, and then I jumped to WWF uh, when they were, you know, doing the whole uh, Attitude Era, pushing people like Stone Cold Steve Austin, Mankind, The Rock, Undertaker, and Kane, etc., etc. So I still try to like want to like wrestling and stuff, and I've garnered a lot of respect for it too. I gained a lot of respect for it uh, because <laughs> I was a theater major and most of wrestling is basically th kind of like theater except with lots of more violence in it and you know I actually do like the, uh, the some of the stage presentations and stuff like the you know the wrestling theme musics that they use for Titantron videos uh, some of the backstage promos which you know Stone Cold Steve Austin and Rock used to cut real damn good promos. Steve Austin, especially when he was in ECW, after WCW fired him, um, I, I enjoyed all that, and I enjoyed how stuff. And that's why I've been looking at some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. I also look at shoot interviews uh, from Jim Cornette, and boy, is he a very opinionated guy. Um, for those who don't know him, I think he used to be a wrestler with a tennis racket, and he used to work for WWF, got fired. Used to work for TNA, got fired. He takes pride in that. He now works for Ring of Honor, but I've been told he's been demoted. He's no longer the head booker there. Uh, it's someone else. He got promoted. He, he got uh, shoved in the back. And he likes to uh, cut some interesting commentaries on what his thoughts on TNA and stuff. Um, very funny guy on how angry he is. And you know what? I actually like listening to people. You, you know, not much rants either I don't like to listen to, but I like to hear uh, rants from people who are familiar with the business, so that's that's how it gets some of my interest there, so I, I also listened to some, uh, I, I saw a Bret Hart interview a long time ago, I thought that was fun, it was, man, he, he's not that strongly opinionated over Vince, even with the Macho Screwjob, but boy does he hate Shawn Michaels, or hated Shawn Michaels, his opinion might have changed, uh, old interview. And, um, yeah, who else? Uh, I mentioned Paul Heyman. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of Eric er er Bischoff doing shoots, but I just like to look it up on YouTube, find some old radio interviews and stuff. It's always fun to listen to those guys for some reason. And also, I've been buying some documentaries, uh, on DVD. Uh, I bought NWO The Revolution, which came out this year, which talks about the, the rise and fall of... The New World Order, one of my favorite factions um, in pro wrestling. It's a little interesting documentary. It was pretty short, but it was fun to watch. It was kind of nostalgic, too. and also has a few matches, which I've yet to see. Uh, I've only saw the Hulk Hogan versus Roddy Piper match, where Macho Man turned heel and joined the NWO. I haven't seen the rest of them yet. But it was a good DVD so far. And yesterday, I bought two different types of DVDs or two different sets of DVDs. Um, the Rise and Fall of ECW, because a friend of mine told me it was really, really good, and I saw it yesterday. It was a long-ass documentary. It had to be over two hours, maybe three hours. But it was fun to watch through and through, which also, and it was a collector's pack that came with their pay-per-view one-night stand on um, June 12, 2005. And I've heard good things about that. But the store where I bought the DVD from had a buy one, get one free for any WWE DVDs. And I found the Best of Raw 15th Anniversary Edition, 1993 to 2008. Sorry, my nose is starting to stuff up a bit. And you know what? I haven't seen the 1993-2008 one, but as long as it has old promos back then, I'll, I'll buy it. Uh, like I said, I, I actually stopped watching WWE around 2006-2007. But all this together... Cost me like what? Seven dollars? What? It <laughs> was a hell of a deal. Uh, I can't wait to look at the uh, best of the, uh, raw DVD. And yeah, that, those those are my thoughts on um, on wrestling. I just can't watch a lot of current wrestling, but I'll watch a lot of old uh, older matches. And you know, look up some of the behind the scenes and how they do things. It's just a, it's it's it, the, the business itself is just fascinating for me to look at. It's just something about it that just le lets me want to know what caused this. What are the what's the mentality behind all this? 
how could you screw this up? How can, how did you make this awesome? You know, it's just really interesting. Uh, I'm starting to turn into a history buff when it comes to wrestling. Um, next thing I want to talk about is WWE 13. I know some people were probably going to ask me if I played that game yet, since I'm getting uh, since I'm getting into wrestling in a different way. And to be honest, the only reason why I bought WWE 13 was because of the Attitude Era that was advertised uh, to be in the game. Um, if it wasn't, I would have probably maybe rented the game or just skipped it all entirely. Because to be honest, again, not following much of current WWE, I'm not familiar with a lot of the wrestlers. Like, I'm looking at the roster there, I'm like, who the hell are, is Teeth Slater and Jinder Mahal? And all these other guys. But, they had the attitude here. Wrestlers I knew, wrestlers I grew up with. Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, um, Undertaker, Kane when he was red and black with the mask on. Um... The APA, or the Alkalites, as they were originally called. But they also had their APA attire, so that's a good thing, because I like them more as the APA. Um, Mark Henry, when he was a member of the Nation of Domination. Uh, all three Mick Foley's. Mankind do love Cactus Jack. Uh, three different Triple H's are in this game. You got Hunter Hearst Hemsley, Prince Blue Blood. You got classic DX slash Corporation Triple H, and then you got the current one, the game Triple H. And interesting. Yeah, they have like alternate versions of re uh, wrestlers, uh, depending on the timeline. They even have classic 2004 heel John Cena, when he had basic thugonomics as his ring entrance. And you know what? A lot, John Cena gets a lot of flack today. Now, I, I, I'm not a big fan of John Cena, but then again, I don't hate him like everyone else does. I don't have this irrational frustration with the guy. And I used to like John Cena back when he was a heel because he put up some really good matches I really liked watching, like um, like the one with Eddie Guerrero at the parking lot brawl in the one episode of SmackDown. That was fun to watch. And... Um, when he was starting out as a face, or when he was starting out as a as as a top ranking champion as a face, he fought JBL in an I Quit match. That was also uh, awesome to watch. It was fun. It was brutal. Both wrestlers were bleeding to the point where they looked like sl uh, slasher villains. <laughs> it was great. So I like John Cena, and even though John Cena wasn't part of the Attitude Era, I believe it was called the Ruthless Aggression Era after 2000, uh, I thought it was interesting that they put him as a hidden character in the game, as well as JBL, and Kevin Nash, and he has his NWO theme in there, and uh, that was cool. So, the Attitude Era and a bunch of other retro wrestlers I used to like were in the game. Um... But my thoughts on WWE 13, uh, I think it's the, it's probably the best wrestling game I've ever played. I know a lot of people are going to be like, really, better than this old game when I was a kid? Now listen, I love WCW vs. NWO World Tour and WCW NWO Revenge. Great games, part of my childhood. Uh, when I bought both of those wrestling games, out of the game, multiple games I got for Christmas, I put a lot of time and hours into those games the most. But, going back at them, they're pretty basic games. Like, wrestling games have got, have evolved, and, you know, I thought they'd gotten a little bit better over time. You know, they added, like, story modes, they've added season, they had a season mode in SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain, and Shut Your Mouth, which had, like, RPG-like elements where you get to make decisions and stuff. And it had no voice acting in it whatsoever, but that was the beauty of it because it didn't have, uh, there, there, there were some uh, limitations that weren't there that helped. And But honestly, I, I really like WWE 13. Uh, I like the Attitude Era mode that you play through. Um, it mainly, and I love the fact that uh, there was like a ton of unlockables. Most of the Attitude Era guys are locked out and by playing the, uh, by unlocking them, you have to play the game, which is something I miss because most most days unlockables are just restricted as DLC only. So that was cool. Um, got to relive some matches or matches I haven't seen before when I was a kid, uh, including the su including the Super Bowl halftime episode between The Rock and Mankind, and they actually have the audience 
they actually had the ring where it was entirely empty. As a result, there was no crowd to hear anything. It just looked empty, and you can hear the audio of the wrestlers and stuff almost clear as day. So I thought that was cool, and that's an unlockable, um, that's an unlockable stage too after you beat that match. They also have universe mode, which is, it, it, it's really good. It, it, it's pretty fun. It's uh, but there's just some little technical things I have issues with. Um, but maybe if I just kept playing it, I'm, I'm trying to push some of my custom characters into the game as like top champs and stuff, because um, I always got used to wrestling gameplay. In, um, the gameplay of, of this game is actually great. I'm glad they brought back the counter system and just reduced it to one button counter. Uh, earlier games, it was just like a, a counter button for strikes, counter button for grapples. Uh, I got used to it real quick, but, you know, it, it, it could have been a little annoying for those who are a little more casual when it comes to playing the wrestling games. Uh, me, I'm a hardcore guy. I know how to play the games. I know how to do the grapples, how to, how, how to do all that stuff, how to grab weapons and smack people with chairs. I'm probably the only person in my friends group, in my group of IRL friends who knows how to play the game deep and intensively. And, um... And the roster's pretty huge. Uh, over a hundred superstars, not including the DLC stuff as well, and, and and your custom characters and whatever you could get um, from the community setting where they set up their own rings and stuff. It's a it's a game that's gonna last me a while. I still play it to this day uh, very um, very often. Um, I do recommend it for those who do like wrestling games as much as I do. Um, even, even if you're not following the current WWE, if you grew up with the Attitude Era, then this game is great. Now, I know they probably did not get every wrestler in every moment of the Attitude Era, because probably due to copyright reasons. Spe speaking of which, everyone on this planet knows that World Wrestling Entertainment used to be called World Wrestling Federation, aka WWF back in the day. I, but then again, the World Wildlife Foundation effed that all up, and I still really never liked them for that. And as a result, when they play certain cinematics or, or use actual audio from back in the day of the Attitude Era, they would always mute out the F or blur out the F out WWF. So they would have a scene where where, where Jim Ross's commentary is like, "We got ourselves a new WWE champion." Like and th that part was just a little un. It's a little uncomfortable because call yourselves WWE nowadays, fine, but you're kind of censoring history, of, of your uh, in a way, man. And I just don't like. It. And yeah, they do this from time to time. Um, I heard I heard uh, Vince McMahon used to censor uh, out the Macho Man before you know before the water uh, before the hatchet was buried. Bret Hart even said in an interview that he was doing that to him for a while, and they're doing it for another wrestler that's, you know, pretty controversial to talk about, um, Chris Benoit, but man, it's just like, you said, it's a little distracting to see a bunch of blurred out Fs all over the footage too. Yeah, they use real, uh, stock, uh, stock footage as montage for some clips in the Attitude Era mode. But you know what, I try not to let that bug me, or I try not to, you know, subtract points off of the game, because what can you do, legal bullshit, um, I find it stupid, but there's no way around it, um, yeah, for some reason, I've seen some footage on DVDs that say WWF, or they say World Wrestling Federation, they don't get censored out whatsoever. So, that's... That's just my thoughts, my quick little thoughts on WWE 13. Great game, big ass roster, half of it dedicated to an era that, you know, saved World Wrestling Federation from WCW. Um, lots of customization, you could customize your ring entrances, you could customize uh, your uh, some superstars, you could even customize arenas. Um, and you can also like go into if you have uh, if you have access to Xbox Live or you know access to the internet on PSN, you can also check out other people's creations. And I did that when they had that free gold weekend and downloaded me a few arenas and stuff. 
you even customize storylines in that game, so lots of customization. The gameplay is really good once you actually start learning how when you learn how to play it, and I think Attitude Era teaches you how to play the game, so if you just start from there and play your way through, you should be able to, you know, naturally play this game. And, you know, it has a little universe mode which has its own little cinematics, cutscene story, line elements and stuff. It even has some RPG elements, but I never got around to it much for some reason. Um... Just, just a really great game overall. I recommend it for re uh, for wrestling fans um, strongly. So that's all I have to say about everything. Um, been looking up history of wrestling as well as some old school matches and stuff. Um, once again, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, that's it. DS217 signing out, and I uh, can't wait to see what I have to review next.